In our last video, we talked about a lunar base, and we mentioned that scientific and economic interests would justify a lunar colony. But the main reason is that humanity needs to expand in the solar system to survive in the long run. This will not be easy, but see for yourself. The first to imagine that other worlds might be full of life and that these worlds should be explored was the British bishop John Wilkins, 1614 to 1672, in his philosophical work, A Discourse Concerning a New World and Another Planet. He was inspired by the work of Nicholas Copernicus and Galileo Galilei. But it wasn't until the 20th century that the idea emerged that we could travel to the moon to mine raw materials and colonize it. One of the first was Fritz Lang in his silent film Woman in the Moon from 1929, which is about a lunar expedition that travels there to mine gold. For film critics, this movie is one of the most important science fiction films of all time, and it already showed the challenges and dangers of space exploration. Decades later, it became a popular theme in science fiction stories of the 1950s and 60s. John DeNike and Stanley Zahn published their idea of a lunar base in Aerospace Engineering in 1962, choosing Mare Tranquillitatis, later the landing site of Apollo 11, for the purpose. Whereas in the past only government actors were considered for this, today there are private companies that, in cooperation with NASA, could make a lunar colony a reality. Elon Musk's SpaceX company, with its Starship HLS, was selected by NASA as a partner in April 2021, which, to put it diplomatically, met with little approval from competitor Jeff Bezos. Not only did he challenge this decision legally, but he also filed a complaint with the Government Accountability Office. In June 2021, he even tried to get $10 billion from the US Congress for his plans, which, again, did not go down well with either political party. One of the richest people on Earth wants taxpayers' money for his space plans? The European Space Agency, ESA, also has an interesting concept with its international moon village. But European space flight lacks a suitable launch vehicle to implement these plans, which is why they would have to rely on a ride. Therefore, future cooperation with SpaceX or Blue Origin is also conceivable, since the new Glenn rocket seems very promising. building the infrastructure. If a greenhouse is sufficient for a lunar station, a lunar colony would need vertical farms for food production. The advantage would be that the food for the colonists could then be produced directly on site, and due to the lower gravity, it would be possible to build much higher than on Earth. Thus, lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers and herbs could be obtained all year round. They would not even require sunlight, because they only need a precisely dosed nutrient solution a good irrigation system, and optimized LED light, preferably blue and red. Under these optimized conditions, the plants can grow better and faster than under natural conditions. Nowadays, the cultivation of vegetables is already being tested in Antarctica by the German Aerospace Center, DLR, in the Eden ISS greenhouse located in the immediate vicinity of the Numea 3 station. One problem, however, is radiation because the outer skin of the building would have to shield it. That's why it can't be done without 3D printers, because for a colony to be economical, as many raw materials as possible would have to be used on site. For example, the EU-funded Regolite project tested the melting process of artificial lunar dust using solar energy before a 3D printer printed the building blocks for the outer skin of a lunar base. Such an outer skin of regolith would have the advantage of being impermeable to radiation. What are the economic advantages of a lunar colony? Mining on the Moon The Moon offers raw materials which are already present on Earth and are used economically. But there is also the very rare element Helium-3 on the Moon. This isotope is distributed to other celestial bodies by the solar wind. Since the Moon, unlike Earth, has no atmosphere and no magnetic field, the substance is also found on the lunar surface. More precisely, it's embedded in the regolith, in small concentrations which is why kilometer-sized areas of lunar dust would have to be harvested to extract any appreciable amount of helium-3. This could be economically worthwhile, since only a few tons would be needed in a future fusion power plant to ensure the energy supply of an entire continent for years.
energy production on the moon. It could also be economically worthwhile to generate solar energy via huge solar fields and transport excess lunar solar power to Earth by means of microwave or laser beams. The moon, since it has no atmosphere or clouds, has a much higher energy yield than what's possible on our planet, especially since the two lunar poles are almost constantly exposed to sunlight since they're only inclined by about 1.5 degrees with respect to the ecliptic. What would be the scientific benefit of a lunar colony? A telescope on the far side of the moon. The far side of the moon is well shielded from Earth and is probably the quietest place closest to Earth. Because of this, this region would be well suited to an optical or radio telescope, as the moon offers several advantages at once. There is no distributing atmosphere to affect the light or signals, and because of the low gravity, huge facilities could be built. The available lunar material could not only be used to build the support structure, the parabolic-shaped reflectors and the antennas, but NASA has already tested the production of a mirror from lunar dust. If a technical problem arises or maintenance becomes necessary, astronauts from a neighboring lunar colony could easily be sent there. Construction of a particle accelerator. A particle accelerator around the moon could reach energy of 14 quadrillion electron volts, 1,000 times the energy of the Large Hadron Collider LHC at CERN near Geneva. This would make it easier for physicists to uncover the secrets of the universe. What are the civilizational advantages of a lunar colony? Olympic Games on the Moon For NASA, it's really only a matter of time before the Olympic Games are held on the moon and it has already identified the perfect place for the Olympic village in the form of the crater Plato, especially since Plato was not only an important philosopher, but also a two-time Olympic champion in pancreation, a mixture of boxing and wrestling. This crater is located near the lunar Alps. However, due to the lack of snow, only a summer event would be possible, where one Olympic record after another would be set, not only in the high jump and long jump, but also in the shot put and javelin. Furthermore, a human could lift weights more easily on the moon and perform completely new feats in gymnastics. However, this sporting event would have to take place under a large dome, or the athletes would have to permanently wear newly developed spacesuits. The ones used so far would be unsuitable for top athletic performances. Springboard to Mars and the Asteroid Belt Raw materials like iron, titanium, aluminium and rare earth elements are needed for the production of high-tech products and the low gravity of the moon lends itself to serve as a stepping stone to the solar system since it's much easier to launch a spacecraft from the moon than it is from Earth. Did this video convince you? Write your opinion in the comments.